Okay. <laughs> You've met Michael, are you? <laughs> this is, this is uh, Eitan. Bogadov. Chodesh Tov. Chodesh Tamuz. That's it. And then later on. Oh, we started to have. What's that? No, no. Tamuz. Tamuz. Let's take a look. I have one of these books. Open up. Here, you know this book? It's three books. This yeah. is the third volume. It's called The Book of Our Heritage. The Month of Time. You can ah, grab. Okay. <laughs> 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 The month of Tammuz is the fourth in the number of months. But when the Jews came from Babylon after the exile, came back to the land, the rabbis decided that they have to be happy that we're returning to the land of Israel. We have to be happy and mark the fact that we came out of the Babylonian exile. And so they kept the names of the months as they were used to, as sort of like a marker that we're celebrating being redeemed from Babylonia. So till this day, even though the Torah doesn't have any names of months, the first, second, third, it's just numbered. We use the ones that the, uh, our forefathers used when they were coming out of Babylon, coming back to the land of Israel. Okay? Go ahead. Rosh Chodesh Tammuz. Rosh Chodesh Tammuz, How many days does it take our perspective when do we see the new moon uh, wax have you know a calendar day if we always choose 29 we'll be off very quickly and if we always choose 30 we'll be off very quickly so the way our calendar works is that we have two different types of months. 29 days, that's the end of the month. That's, you could call it an incomplete month, but it's, that's the month. And then the new month starts with number one. But I said, if we always did 29 days and then the new month starts with uh, right afterwards, you'd be off by a half a day. After two months, you're off by a full day. After three months, you're off by a day and a half. After four months, you're off by two full days. So sometimes we have months and we do 30 days. We have 28, 29, and 30 days. And only then do we start the new month. So sometimes it might be perfect. Yes. Done. Bye. Uh, 
אוקיי, בהמשך היום, בעזרת השם. אמרת לו כבר? אמרת לו כבר? לגבי המפגש עם דן, עם המשפחה, אמרת לו? כן, הוא קיבל את הזמן, אוקיי, בסדר, בסדר, יופי. לא, 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 אוקיי, תודה. He was talking to me. Oh, he's talking to me. Also, your point with Rabbi Levy has to be oh, changed. Okay. Yes, that he was talking to me. <laughs> Sorry, it's a little confusing. Anyways, 29 months is the incomplete month. 30 days is the full month. What's surprising though is this day, and this goes into a longer story, which we're not going to get into right now. So which day is the full? Of course, on this type of month, It's day number one. However, in this type of month, if it's a full month with 30 days, we have, of course, number one is Rosh Chodesh, but also day 30 is called Rosh Chodesh, the beginning of the month. We have two days which we celebrate. That today is the 30th of Sivan. It's Rosh Chodesh. I'm wearing a white shirt to mark... a little bit festive, festive character of Rosh Chodesh. Tomorrow also, two days in a row, Rosh Chodesh. And uh, that's what he was explaining, that uh, the month of uh, Tammuz is always complete, the month of Av is always uh, incomplete. It usually works out like one Then if you do half-half, it's almost... Like working out. It's always 29 and a half, so it's sometimes... In yeah, half. it's always 29 and a half. That's okay. the cycle of the moon. That's just the way it works. We move our calendar, and one month is, is 29 days, one month is 30 days. One month is 29, one month 30, except for some exceptions. It's pretty much uh, a cycle like that, and that way we never get too far off. When, but the, what it means is very interesting. We have two days of Rosh Chodesh, even though today technically is not yet Tammuz. Today is the 30th day of Sivan. Do you know the months of the year? Do you know the name of the months? I have it here. I sent it to you before, but maybe you didn't remember it. Let me see if I can uh, pull it out for you. I have a few copies, maybe. Oh, no, that's not it. Yeah. Today is not a fast day. Today is Rosh Chodesh. You're not allowed to fast. It's a festive day. The opposite. Let me see. I have it here. You should know the months of the year. Um, Well, if you have bread, you do Birkat HaMazon, and you add into the Birkat HaMazon, Ya Alev Yavo. Did you add it into your prayers this morning? Do you know that the... Uh, do you know what the Ya Alev Yavo section is? Oh, in, in, it's in the Birkat HaMazon, but it's also in the, in the, in the uh, Amidah. In the Amidah, yeah? What section is it added into? Ya Alev Yavo, about Rosh Chodesh. What section of the Amidah do we add that in? Hopefully you did it just a few minutes ago, this morning. Where's my page? What section? Yeah, you can look up the Sidur. You have your Sidur. Yeah, this is one. Yeah, this like uh, when you also say the 
other blessings from the Sukkot. And, uh, That's right. It's called the Ritzay section, the section that starts with the word Ritzay. Restoration of the That's right. Here's um, Michel. Could you go into Rav Lisman's office and make uh, four copies? Ask him for four copies of this, please. So yes, we add the Alevavu and the Ritzei section. It's called uh, the, the, the services should be accepted. You have the page? What page? 188. 188, exactly. exactly. Anyway, so we add that uh, both today and tomorrow. 188. That's correct. The same thing we add in uh, 188, 189. We also add that same passage into the Birkat Amazon. Okay. Find it in the Birkat Amazon. Let's for where's Birkat Amazon in this Sidur? I'll give you a page number in a second. Page 1057. One thousand and actually go to one thousand and sixty four. One zero six four. You see at the bottom of the page, it's exactly the same. Yeah, it starts Elokeinu Elokevotinu, God, our God and the God of our ancestors. Ya alev yavo, may their rise, come, reach, appear, be favored. It's the same addition that we have here. God and God of our ancestors, may they rise, come, reach, appear. Be favored, heard, regarded, and remembered before you. This passage is called Ya'alev Yavo. It's added into the Amidah three times a day. Ma'ariv Shacharit Mincha. And then again for another day. When there's two days of Rosh Chodesh, Arvit Shacharit and Mincha, we add that in. And also, if you if you say Birkat Amazon, if you have bread, and you say the book of Amazon, you have to add it in on page 10, what, 1064. For these 48 hours. Mm-hmm. On another month, if it's only one day of Rosh Chodesh, it's only for 24 hours. If you have bread during those 24 hours, you add in the Alev Yavo. We have to make our prayers current. If they're up, up to date. Mm-hmm. You, can't, you can't read yesterday's newspaper. Right? It's, it's out of date. It's not, uh, it's not fresh. Has to be current. Today is Rosh Chodesh. Your prayers have to include a mention of Rosh Chodesh. If you don't, do you know what happens if you forget to say the insertion of Yalev Yavo? Prayers are not valid. You have to go back, repeat the prayers from the beginning with the Yalev Yavo. A prayer on Rosh Chodesh without Yalev Yavo is not kosher. Okay? And Birkat Amazon also. Birkat Amazon is a little more complicated because you don't really have to eat at all. You shouldn't fast, but you don't have to eat bread. You don't have to have a Suda and Rosh Chodesh. So uh, you don't have to repeat the uh, Birkat Amazon. Also Halal, very good. On the days of Rosh Chodesh, we, our custom is to say Halal. Thank you so much, sir. You're welcome. You gotta give you more. Give me more. Okay, great. Okay, sir. So take give out, give them out. Right. It's not quite half. It means we skip two sections in the Hallel. It's you know Hallel is the series of Tehillim, but we sort of skip uh, a little bit. That's that's for Rosh Chodesh. We do what's called it's called the half Hallel. Okay? okay? Good. Only on Rosh Chodesh. Uh, all Rosh Chodesh, yeah, every Rosh Chodesh. Okay. Except for one. Super. There's actually two. <laughs> two Rosh Chodesh that are different. One is, which one? Sukkot, I think. Sukkot's not on Rosh Chodesh. Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah is also Rosh Chodesh, and we don't say the Halal because it's a day of judgment. And how can we sing and be happy and praise Hashem in such a uh, regular way? Also, it's the new year, so we sort of hide the issue that it's the, the new month, because it's the new year that takes, overrides the celebration of the new month. That's one exception. The other exception is not Sukkot, but 
not Pesach either. Those are in the middle of the month, both of those holidays. No, it's always on the 10th of the month. Can never be. What other holiday could fall on Rosh Chodesh? Shabbat, but this, we don't change things up. If Shabbat, Rosh Chodesh, we say a half Halel, just like every other Rosh Chodesh. We say on Shabbat a special prayer for Shabbat and for Rosh Chodesh. But there's one holiday which could fall out on Rosh does fall out on Rosh Chodesh every year. Not Rosh Hashanah, aside from Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah is correct. That's one exception. We don't say the Halal on Rosh Hashanah. And the other holiday? Is the Feast of Tris? Nope. That's on the 15th of Shvat, according to our practice. At one time, Beit Shammai said that we should do it on the Rosh Chodesh Shvat, but we don't do that. What uh, holiday am I talking about? No, Yom Kippur is on the 10th of... You have it here. You have it. Look at the page I just gave you. We have the entire year here. You can see the he- names of the Hebrew months on the left-hand column. Nisan is the first month. You see that? Mm-hmm. Next month is called? Yeah. Yeah. Er. Sukkot. Next, no. Sukkot is from the 15th, as you can see. Shavuot on the 6th. Take a look. It tells you what day it's on. You see that? The 14th is Passover. The 15th to the 21st, unleavened bread. 16th, offering the first fruits. The 14th of ER is the late Passover. Sivan, the 6th, is 6th of Sivan, is the festival of the weeks. Is there any other holiday which comes out on Rosh Chodesh? See, is it on the list? It's hidden. It's hidden. Because see, you can see, all the pieces, see dates with it. And okay, so you can see that this is all in English, right? So it calls the Festival of Weeks Pentecost. That's Shavuot, what we call Shavuot, right? Let's look at Tishrei now, halfway through the page, right? Tishrei, in the Torah, is called Yercha Eitanim. On the first day, trumpet blast. What do we call that? Rosh Hashanah. So you could write in in your paper page if you want to keep it. This is the day of Rosh Hashanah, the Hebrew day. The Hebrew day. Well, on the tenth day is uh, Yom, Kippur. Yom Kippur. We call it the, the Yom Kippur. Fifteenth to the twenty-first is the festival of booths. Sukkot. Sukkot, exactly. And the twenty-second. Twenty-second, the, the, the eighth day. It's called the Shmini Atzeret, right? You see where I am in Tishrei? Mm-hmm. Now go to Kislev. Kislev, 25th, Festival of Dedication. What do we say? What do we call that in, in Hebrew? Chanukah. Chanukah. How long does Chanukah last? Eight days. 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, and 1. And two, eight days. So the festival of Hanukkah, it's not written here properly. It's from 25th all the way into the beginning of Tevet. So every year Hanukkah falls out on Rosh Chodesh. And on most Rosh Chodesh, we say what Eitan was saying. It's, it's called half Halil. It's not quite half. It just means it's not complete. Chanukah, all eight days of Chanukah, we recite a full Hallel. So on that Rosh Chodesh, we recite a full Hallel as well, because it's also Rosh Chodesh, but it's also Chanukah. So we say the full Hallel because of Chanukah, not because of Rosh Chodesh. There's a full, full Hallel, it's recited on the Rosh Hashanah, and then... Not on Rosh Hashanah, no Hallel on Rosh Hashanah. Full Hallel on Rosh Chodesh Tevet, because it's part of Chanukah. Okay, okay. But it's, but, but it's like those two are different from all the... Rosh all the Chodesh. other Rosh Chodesh, our yeah. custom is half halal. It's called half halal. It's not quite half. Okay? Anyways, what month are we in now? Almost. Month of... Well... No, well it's Sivan still. Today, oh. it's still Sivan. You see it on the page, the third month. We're starting the fourth month tomorrow, Bezrat Hashem. 
And it's nice, you can see what uh, season it is in the agricultural. On the far right, you see it's the first the harvest of the barley around Pesach, and then harvest of the wheat around Shavuot, and then the beginning of the first fruits, the figs, and the grapes. Yesterday I saw a beautiful fig tree. The figs were almost ripe. Grapes in my garden, you can see them in the supermarkets now, but in my garden I had one. It was good, but it was still a little bit immature. I left, it, I left the grapes, the rest of the grapes, on the tree to make sure that they ripen. But this is the time of all the summer fruits during the summer coming up. Tammuz, Av, Elul. And uh, then in Tishrei we have the festival of booths has another name. It's also called the festival Chag HaAsif. When we gather in all of our, all the fruits have been gathered in, all the summer fruits. And uh, we celebrate with our, with our uh, pantries full of, of fruits. Then we start plowing for the new year and we pray for the rains. You understand that? You see that uh, on, the, on the church? Tishrei? We'll get to there. It's only one fruit, which is later, as you can see, up until Hanukkah time. And that's the which which, harvest, which, which uh, ripens later than, than any other fruits. This is the uh, cycle, the agricultural cycle in... I'm sorry, you can't see the colors because the colors show you the temperature, but you know the temperatures. Okay, so I want to teach you a song of the Hebrew months, so that you'll remember them off by heart. It goes like this, Nisan, you see it? Start, starting from the top. Nisan, E-R, Sivan, Tammuz, Av, Elul, Tishrei, Cheshvan, Kisle, Tevet, Shevat, Adar. Adar, sometimes there's a, a second Adar, but the song doesn't have it. That's it. Now you know. Just repeat that over and over and over again. When you're putting your children to sleep, Stephen. <laughs> when you're putting yourself to sleep, Eitan. <laughs> Sing the song and you'll know all the months I've part. Nisan iyar sihivan tamuz av elul tishrei chashvan kisle tevet sheva at adam. Do you know this tune? It's like a children's uh, nursery rhyme, no? This tune also for Anna Gret. There's also a song. Maybe. Uh, there's, there is a different song. I don't know. Does it to this tune? I've never heard it to this tune. Maybe you can sing it. Anyways, now you. You ready? Now you. Go ahead. Micha, you sing it for us. Sihivan Tamuz Av Elul Tishrei Cheshvan Kislev Tevet Shevat Adar Everybody together now. Nisani Al Sivan Tamuz Av Elul Tishrei Cheshvan Kislev Keep this in your pocket whenever you're waiting for the bus. Sing it. Sing it and you'll know it off the heart. One more time? Yes. Okay. Okay, Stephen, take it away. Everybody will join you. Again. Nisan iyal sihivan tamuz av elul tishrei cheshvan kisle tevet shevat ada. I see here that they did a transliteration with a B instead of a V. For av, it should be a V. And tishrei is the way we pronounce it. E-I instead of I at the end. Tishrei. Kislev, Tevet, Tevet it should be, not Tebet. <laughs> tevet. Shvat also. Instead of a B, you should have a V there. Adar. But I think if the computer do it, it's like a bit without the point. That's right. 
Right? That's right. That's right. Uh, maybe they 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 don't know how we speak with the dagesh, without the dagesh, with the dot inside the letter. Okay, Yisrael, you got it. You ready? Let's all do it together. Nisan Iyasivan Tamuz Av Elul Tishrei Cheshvan Kislev Tevet Shivat Ada. Okay, also Kislev. It does have a dot in the Chaf. So we say Kislev. They have a CH. I don't know why, but uh, different ways of transliterating. Anyways. You got it. So what month are we in? Num- number? Tammuz is number four. The end of Sivan is three. And oh, right, right. Why did the why do we start counting from Nisan? Since the Exodus. Excellent. Exodus. The first mitzvah we got as a Jewish people. He came out of uh, Egypt. God came to Moses and said, Tell the Jewish people, this month shall be the first of the month. Right? The truth is. It's a cycle. It's a year. What's the first? Any any point along any point in the circle is the beginning and the end. You can choose what's the beginning and the end arbitrarily. The Torah comes and says, "Choose Nisan," because you always remember that I took you out of Egypt. Because it happened on the fifteenth of of Nisan, we came out of Egypt, and. That same idea that we should remember the redemption, the same idea we should remember the redemption, that's why we use the Babylonian names. Instead of, it would be a stupid song. If we just use the numbers, we wouldn't have anything to remember. Here, I give this to. Uh, to uh, oh, you have one there? Okay, you have one there. Good. Yeah. A question. So, what, because, like, um, from the moment in the book of Shemara, Hashem introduced to Moshe Rabbeinu, yes. that is, this is the, the first month. First month. Nisan is the first month. So, we yes. first one, two. That's one, two, but, three, but, yeah. But, does that mean that, that, like, when you read the story of Noah, when they say about the ninth month, the ark was this and that? It's a very good question. The commentators in the, in the book of uh, Breshit, when it comes to the Mabul story, the story of the flood, and it has lots of, you know, this month number one, number seven, number nine, what system are they using? Are they using the, uh, the system from Nisan? Or the other option is the beginning of the year for schools. When do schools start? September. September 1st. And why? Because that's the beginning of the agricultural cycle. It says, you see here, in Tishrei you plow. You, you start to plow and get ready the fields and then the rains come during the winter and then you harvest everything at the end of the year. You're finished by Elul. Right? That, and then Tishrei. So it really, there's two beginnings of the year. There's one over here and one over here. This we'll call it Nisan. So I think most of the, the Western world starts the year from September. The agricultural cycle, that's the natural beginning of the year. And uh, Nisan is the sixth month. Hashem came and told us, no, no, make Nisan the first month to commemorate the Exodus. So Tishrei is going to be the seventh month. Right, six months and six months, twelve months of the year. Of course, we know that the uh, the Christians came, and they decided what's the beginning of the year? January. January, right? Why did they do that? Because of the, the God with the two heads, the new head. And the so I'm not sure. I think uh, maybe there's a pagan uh, history to it, but I think the Christians did it because that's when uh, Jesus was born. January. December twenty fifth. And then the Brit was on January 1st. <laughs> he was a Jew. So maybe they're celebrating his Brit. I don't know. <laughs> but but that's, that's, uh, that's somewhere over here. Right? January. So that's when they chose to, to make the new year. We, don't, we have a Jewish calendar. We have two new years. Either Nisan or Tishrei. Both. Of course we celebrate the new year in Tishrei. 
we still have the cycle of agriculture. We pray, it's the day of judgment, because we're going to plow, and get ready for the rains to fall. But in terms of, so when it comes to years, this is the new year. But when it comes to uh, months, this is the first month. Very strange. We don't start the new year with the first month. We start it with the seventh month. Because we count the months from Nisan, because that's the first mitzvah we got. So commemorate the Exodus in the num- counting the numbers of months. Okay, is that clear? So it's a very strange system. So we have two beginnings of the year, really. We have the beginning of the months, and then we have the beginning of, of the new year. Um, okay, so Nisan is, so in terms of the book of uh, Bereshit, the story of the flood, there's different ways of understanding it. Some commentaries, Michael, some commentaries say that the Torah, in its description of the flood, and it mentions the sixth month, the seventh month, the second month, some people say the Torah switches in the middle of its description of what happened in the flood. Some of the dates are counting from Tishrei, one, two, three, four, and some of them are counting from Nisan, one, two, three, four. So it's very complicated to understand exactly. There's different ways of, of understanding what the flood actually, uh, what the, what the uh, progression was like in terms of the dates. It's a big confusion. Till today, we don't know exactly what, the, what, the, what it means. But anyways, um, one more time, are you ready? Pinchas, you can sing with us. Uh, we're singing a new song for the months of the year. Do you know them off by heart? The months of the year, off by heart. Do you know them, the names? Uh, Ni- Nissan? Yeah? Let's hear. Don't look. Show. What are the names of the months? <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. I want you to write in next to each one in, in Chinese. What is, what is <laughs> Nissan? Yeah, it's, it's very difficult, I know. <laughs> you have to make up a transliteration type of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah I have. You have it uh, in a chart? Yeah, yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, I have, I have. Send it to us. <laughs> Stephen, can I be interested? You know Chinese, but there's no names for the Hebrew months in Chinese. Someone made a transliteration, I think. Ni san, right? Mm-hmm. E-R, right? That's... But Tevel sounds like Tibet. Tevel sounds like Tibet. It's easy to remember. Good. But it's Tevet. Right? The V's. Switch them with the V's. Let's show, uh, let's show uh, Pinchas what we learned. Okay? Everybody ready to... We learned this before you came in. You came late. <laughs> you came in. We learned all of the 12 months of the year. Af Bahar. Eitan, do you know what Af Bahar? Not by heart? No. I know it by heart. So you can test me. Join me. Nisan Iyar Sivan Tamuz Tre Av Elul Tishrei Cheshvan Kislev Tevet Shvat Adal Nisan Iyar Sivan Tammuz Av Elul Tishrei Cheshvan Kislev Tevet Shvat Adar Got it? Getting it, getting it. Keep practicing. You have the pages. So you put it in your pocket and you can even take it into the bathroom. There's nothing, not quite a Torah. It's just a calendar. But, you know, and it's not in Hebrew, so you could probably... Uh, it does have the, the, the festivals, which is maybe uh, it wasn't in, it wasn't printed with the intention to be something holy. So you could even uh, carry it with you. All right, let's open up the book of our heritage one one more time and finish it up. Just uh, showing you about the, the today uh, the new moon, page one ninety three, one nine three in the book of our heritage in this edition. The third paragraph says that we have a few events that happened during Tammuz. 
the, the major event is coming uh, on the 17th, but before that, according to our tradition, it says, Eitan, you were reading so well, on the 3rd of Tammuz. On the 3rd of Tammuz, Joshua uh, caused. caused the sun and the moon to stop in order to accept retrib- retribution. Retribution, yeah, it's to pay back. From Give on. Give on. And the moon stands still in the valley of I I alone. And the moon stayed uh, still I think still uh, in the nation have avenged themselves of their enemies. You know the story, right? Yoshua was fighting against the nations and in those days they didn't have what do our soldiers have today on their oh, heads? Helmets, Special helmets. helmets, and on top of the helmets, usually they have oh, yes. a flashlight. Mm. Ah. So they can see in the, in the dark. They fight at night. Mm. A lot of times, mo- our soldiers were very rich. We have night vision. Mm. And a lot of the enemies don't. So we like to fight at night. But in those days, in the ancient times, they didn't have any of that. Couldn't fight at night. You didn't know what was going on. You would kill yourself if you fought at night. Maybe you'd be killing your friend instead of your enemy. And so, when the sun sets, that's the end of the war for today. You have to stop. Yeshua was winning. He was beating out the enemies. I think it was the kings of the south. When he realized... We're chasing after them. They're running away. But the sun is setting. It's going to get dark soon. So he turned to Hashem and he prayed to him. Shemesh begivon dom. Ve'arech be'emak ha'elon. Let the sun stop moving. And this, the, the moon sometimes, right? It's parallel. The moon also goes around. The sun and the moon need to stop. Because we need more time of daylight to catch up to our enemies and to kill them and to get rid of the seven nations from the land of Israel. And uh, this was an amazing miracle. Can you stop the sun? That's what the book of Joshua tells us. One of the miracles of the book of Joshua is, and according to our tradition, that happened on the 3rd of Tammuz. (laughs) 3rd of Tammuz, if tomorrow is Thursday, is day one, Friday is day two, Shabbat. So on Shabbat is the, is the anniversary of the miracle of Yehoshua. The next holiday really is only not on the third, but all the way to the 17th, two weeks after that. Two weeks after that is the fast of the 17th of Tammuz. Okay, Stephen, will you read for us? There are days. There are days of fast because of the tribulation which they recall. The purpose of such fast day is to awaken hearts towards repentance through recalling our forefathers' mistakes. Mistakes which led to calamities our, as well as our own repetition of those deeds. As it is said, and they shall utter confession for their transgression and the transgression of their fathers. So wait a stop. Stop here for a second. We commemorate a bad thing that happened on, on fast days. 17th of Tammuz is one of them. We're going to see that there's a number of other fast days. But it's not only that we're thinking about well, the bad thing that happened. We're thinking about why it happened. Pinchas, why did we have suffering? Why did Hashem give us such hard times? Our tradition tells us that we should, uh, we believe that we did something wrong. Reward, if we do good, 
punishment if we don't. The Jewish people in those days must have done something wrong, and Hashem brought the calamity, the, the, the tragedy, the, the destruction of that day, these fast days. It's not just about, though, what they did then. Do we have a Beit HaMikdash? We probably didn't fix what we need to fix. These days that we fast, they all have something to do with the process of the Beit HaMikdash being destroyed. Ultimately, the, the, the strongest fast, the worst day, is the 9th of Av, when the temple was actually destroyed. But there's four, three other days which we fast, which led up to the destruction of the temple. So it's part of the process. Each time we fast, something significant happened on that day. And so we remember what, we, what they did wrong, but not only what they did wrong, but we do wrong as well. Fasting is to remind us of what we're doing wrong, and what we need to fix. It's called teshuvah, to do repentance. That's what he quoted on the top of page 194. When we say confession, for the transgressions of the fathers, but also for their transgressions and the transgressions of their fathers. We have to do tshuva as well. Each person is therefore on the fast days. And again, we'll talk about the fast days more in the coming two weeks. But the basic idea of having a fast day is, go ahead, Stephen, each person is therefore... Each person is therefore required to engage in self-examination lost them and to undertake repentance from wrongdoing for the essential significance of the fast consists of repentance and fasting itself is merely a preparation for repentance it is thus written of the people of Nineveh and the Lord saw their action upon which the rabbis have commented it is not said and he saw their sackcloth and fasting but rather their action those who spend the fast day ideally emphasize what is secondary and disregard what is essential. Nevertheless, one cannot discharge his obligation through repentance alone. For fasting is prescribed on this day as a prophetic ordinance, and all Israel have accepted these fast days through the generation. So, what's the most important thing about the fast day? What are you supposed to do on a fast day? Most primary, most important thing to do on a fast day. Wrong! That's it. Self-examination. Teshuvah, repentance. We also have to not eat. <laughs> but don't confuse the main point of the day with the secondary point of the day. The means, the method we use is by not eating. But if you spend all day thinking about food, <laughs> you're missing the point. The point is not just to be hungry. The point is to have a day of introspection, of tshuva, of, of, of fixing, of trying to uh, uh, fix what you've done wrong. There's also a big difference what you see with, with our fasting or with, with the Ramadan. Yeah, how, how do you see it's different? Because what I know from my experience, they're not concerned with the self, uh, self uh, inspection, self check. Ah. More with, we don't eat because more people don't have food. So ah, interesting. Concept. Right, these this are fast to, to bring us to tshuva. Because of the commemoration of the tragedy which happened on that day, now we're going to learn about the tragedies that happened on that day. But what are these four days? What are these four fast days? Let's finish it off, Stephen. There are four such fast days. The fast of the fourth, the fast of the fifth, the fast of the seventh, and the fast of the tenth. The fast so stop there. Let's look at your page. What's the fast of the fourth? Look on the page. The fourth month. What's the fourth month? Tammuz. Tammuz. That's the one that's coming up in two weeks' time, two weeks from Shabbat, right? We do it on Sunday, actually, not on Shabbat, because it gets pushed off. We don't, you shouldn't fast on Shabbat. So we do it on the next day, Sunday. 
So on Sunday, in two weeks, there's going to be the fast of the 17th of Tammuz, it's called. Next, what the fast of the 4th? Then there's the fast of the? The 5th. What's the 5th month? Av. So you can add in to your chart over here. In Tammuz, you should add in. 17th of Tammuz is a fast day. In Av, add in. What's the day we fast during Av? Pens? Behind you, there should be... uh, uh, pens and pencils. Uh, bring the whole thing, yeah. Bring the whole thing. Whoever needs, yeah. So there's the fast. This is a quote from Jeremiah, by the way. This is uh, in the book of Yirmiyahu. It lists these fast days, four fast days. Fast of the fourth. Fast of the 5th, Tammuz and Av, they each have a fast day, okay? And then, what's next, what's next? The fast of the 7th, oh, what's the 7th month? 7th month is the month Tishrei. Tishrei, that's right. Tishrei. On the 3rd day of Tishrei, we fast, it's called Tzom Gedalia. That's the fast of the 7th. And then the last one is the fast of the 10th. What's the 10th month? Tevet. Tevet, very good. The 10th of Tevet, actually. The 10th of the 10th is the four. These are the four fast days that we all uh, fast. It's been accepted from the time of the prophets. As I said, they're mentioned in Jeremiah. He was a prophet. First temple time. All the Jewish people are fasting these four days a year. There's one more day that we fast. Of course. Yom Kippur is the only one that's biblical. Only one that, that's from the Torah that we have to fast is Yom Kippur. But the prophets already mentioned that the Jewish people accepted to fast four more days. Not exactly like Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is more severe. How is Yom Kippur more severe than the other four fasts? 24 hours, 25 hours even, right? The other four fasts, only daytime, except for one. One of the four, the custom is to make it more severe, like Yom Kippur. Which one? Not the 17th of Tammuz, don't worry. (laughs) Not the one coming up soon. Tisha B'Av. The 9th of Av, the one coming up next month, full 24-hour fast. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you you know you can fast easily. Okay. Yeah, she's right. easier. Tisha you say so. Tisha B'Av is actually longer smoke. than than Yom Kippur. Yeah, Yom you Kippur. can smoke on Tisha B'Av. Oh, you can never smoke. Smoking is forbidden. <clears throat> but 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 on the day they say like yeah, from uh, one time you can smoke because the fire has, uh, was stopped or something like that. Obviously, the office on another day that. I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced that. Uh, the halacha. The halacha says that you're not allowed to to do anything that's bad for your health. And now we know. Now we know that it's very bad for your health to smoke. So, kick the habit. <laughs> okay. Next. So the four days, four fast days. You see the month of the fourth month, the fifth month, the seventh month, and the fast of the tenth. Now let's continue reading, Stephen. The fast of the fourth. The fast of the fourth refers to the fast of the 17th of Tammuz. Since Tammuz, Tammuz is a fourth month of the number of the months counting from Nisan. The fast of the fifth is the fast of Tish Tishabea, the fifth month. The fast of the seventh is the fast of Gedalia, which occurred on the third of Tishrei. The seventh month, the fast of the ten, is the fast of the ten of Tevet, the ten month. Very good. You ready mm-hmm. to sing with me? Yes. Nisan, Iyar. Pinchas, I can't hear you. Nisan, Iyar, Sivan, Tammuz, Av, Elul, Tishrei, Cheshvan, Kislev, Tevet Shvat Ada. Eitan, what's the seventh month? Seventeenth. 
Seventh month? Tishrei. Tishrei, good. Yisrael, what's the fourth month? <laughs> Tammuz. Tomorrow, we start Tammuz. Okay. Pinchas, what's the tenth month? Tevet, right. So if you're writing now, you're writing your pens and papers, switch all the B's to V's. Right? Yes. Yes. Before you came here, I described it. You came late. I talked about it. <laughs> I'll say it again. We find this phenomenon that why is Nisan the first month? Hashem told us, make Nisan the first month to commemorate, to remember that Hashem redeemed us. There was a second time Hashem redeemed us. When He took, off, uh, took us out of Babylon. The second time Hashem redeemed us. So the sages said, let's remember the redemption in the calendar. We're going to use the Babylonian.